Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. He's wonderful. Hallelujah. I want us all just to stand for a short while. I'm standing here as a messenger of the word of God. And so I want him to take the stage. I know you will look at me, but I know if he takes the stage, then you will hear what I'm allowed to say. Hallelujah. Amen. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel. in your life. 
Amen. Not only about the food. Not only about maybe you're going out to lunch somewhere. But the Holy Spirit will make an indelible impression in your life today. Amen. Whatever Amen. your position is as a father. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Today, I just want to speak for a short while. I won't labor before you long. My topic this morning is the battle for the family. The battle for the family. I'll be reading um, mainly from Nehemiah chapter 4. But I just want us to think about some things. What is happening to the family? I don't want to bore you with statistics. What we hear in the news, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, all what is happening to the family. And I believe the Father in heaven, by whose name the whole family in, in, in heaven and earth is named, is not happy. So we cannot say happy fathers, do we? He's not pleased with what is going on. And so this morning, I'm just here to challenge all of us, not only the Father, but to challenge all of us to rise up and to suffer. Rise up and to suffer. Amen. It takes one family at a time. Yes. One family at a time. And so I'm appealing to all of us. Let us take stock of what is happening. Look at the devastation of families. Look at what the devil is doing to families. Trying to destroy that which God created even before the foundation of the world. With all sorts of antiques and tactics and manipulations and agendas, the devil is set on destroying the family. Yes. But my friend, this morning, I want us to get angry in your spirit. If you are not being angry, I want you to be angry in your spirit because I am angry every day. Even as the Bible says, God is angry with the wicked every day. I am angry with what the devil, I say the devil is doing to families. Families created in God's image with a purpose. God had a plan for the family. From the very beginning, he had a plan. That's why we are told in Genesis 1, 26, what are we told? He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion. That was God's plan. It's not that the devil should be running riots. The devil should be running rampant, meddling, interfering, doing all sorts of things to families. Oh no. I think the time is now to arise, Amen. to arise as people of God. Because we know what the scripture says, right? Second Chronicles 7, 14, what does it say? If my people, if my people, that's the bottom line, if my people, and so if we, as God's people, sit and wait for the government to start to do something, we have to pray the government to do something. And I want you to know that I have a pastor in Texas and we are praying every day. Every day. And I want to encourage you, however busy you are, find somebody because it's helpful, because you, 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 are, you are accountable. Find somebody to be, able, to be able to pray. Pray things into existence. Pray that the government will move. Pray that something will be done. Pray if you can't match, they've been matching all over the place. What has the matching done? Nothing. But I believe we as God's people, we have the solution. We are not going to sit down and allow the devil to destroy our families. To destroy, because 
Without the family, there is no nation. Without the family, there is no community. Without the family, there is no church. God created the family before he created the church. Without the family, there is no ministry. Without the family, there is no job. Without the family, there is nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing. And so this morning, I, I want us, you know, I just want to want you to have that anger, the anger that I have at the devil. So I just want us to stand up and just give a few um, passages. I don't know why now I see in the churches we don't read scripture. You know, we don't take time to, even it's 10 minutes to read the word of God, but I just want to read a few passages passage here. Passage is from Nehemiah chapter 4. Okay. Our anchor scripture will be Nehemiah 4. Our anchor verse will be Nehemiah 4, 14. But if you can just stand up with me, I'll just read a few verses. <clears throat> Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Okay. Nehemiah chapter 4, I'll just be skipping verses. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are gone? Now Tobiah and the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their walls. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, that's Nehemiah praying, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. I read um, from verse 13. Therefore, set I in the lower places behind the wall, and in the higher places, I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up, verse 14, and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them, Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their cancer to naught, that we returned all of us to the world, every one unto his work. You may be seated. <clears throat> We all know the story of um, Nehemiah. He was uh, in bondage in, uh, in uh, Shushan, the palace. And then he, he, uh, news came to him that um, the walls of Jerusalem was broken down. And so he prayed and sought permission from the king to go and build the wall. I call it the Nehemiah Project. And so I want you to put your name, Carl Project. Brother Obed, Project. All the fathers, and even all of us here too, put your name and say, I, I say Gloria Project. Nehemiah had a project. You put your name, hallelujah, and say, this is my project. This is my project for the family. The topic is the battle for the family. This is my project. This is what I am going to do. Because Nehemiah decided what he was going to do, right? To go and build the wall. Because if you don't, if you don't own it, you can't do anything about it. But when you own it, when you name it, when you call it your own, then you'll be able to ready to do something about it. Because if we wait and say, everybody, somebody will have to do something, nobody will do anything. Nobody whatsoever. But if we own it, if I own it, you own it, you own it personally, then you'll be able to arise and do something. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so this morning, we see that hell was not created for the human being. Not at all. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. And by what we see, that the, what the devil is doing now to the family, <laughs> He's trying to take the family to hell. Look 
at what is happening to children. Look at what is happening to parents. It's a horrible situation. But this morning, I just want to challenge us. Man is God's highest creation. Man is God's highest creation. God took time to make man. And he gave man the task to have dominion. And so we see here that Nehemiah <clears throat> decided to go and build the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah was given this project. I just want you to know this morning, your job is not your project. Your business is not your project. Your ministry is not your project. I'm sorry to say. Your family is your project. Fathers, young men, whatever. Your family is your project. Because if your family is destroyed, you have no job, you have no ministry, you have no business, you have nothing. What are you working for? If your family is destroyed. So your family is your first project after God. God is first in your life. But your family should be your project. You should leave no stone unturned to see that family turn out to be what God intended them to be. Yes. And when I say family, I mean your wife, your children, and even your extended family. Because Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 5, 8, a man who is not able, he did not say a woman, a man, who is not able to look after his family, to provide for them, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. First Timothy 5, that's, that's a terrible indictment. And so I want you to see your, your, your project after God Almighty. Take your project as your family. Amen. I want you to see your project, your family as your project. If we are acquainted with the, um, with the book of Nehemiah, we can see that the prophet Nehemiah was a man of prayer. Was a man of prayer. And if you are going to make anything out of your family, you have to be a man of prayer. You have to be a man of prayer. Nehemiah prayed on every and any occasion, he prayed. And so I want to ask, how much are you praying for your family? How much time do you spend before the Lord for your family? Nehemiah prayed. Nehemiah 1, verse 4, verse 11. Nehemiah 2, verse 4. Nehemiah 4, 4 to 5. Nehemiah 5, 19. Nehemiah 6, Verse 9, verse 14. Nehemiah 13, verse 22, verse 10. Every moment, every step of the way, Nehemiah prayed. And so I want to challenge you this morning. Arise and begin to pray for your family. Begin to engage the enemy. It's a battle. Begin to engage the enemy for your family. Because the devil is out to destroy your family. He doesn't care whether you can speak in tongues. It doesn't care how spiritual you are. The devil is not afraid of anyone. The only thing that makes the devil run is prayer and the word. <laughs> Those two things. And so if you really want to see your family be what God has called them to be, right here in this age that we are living, those two things you have to be or we have to be not only the men, but people of prayer. People of prayer. Husband and wife together, praying. But the fact is, the man should be in the forefront. The man should take the responsibility. You should take the responsibility for prayer. And so as we look quickly at our, our verse that we are, we are working on, which is verse 14, 
What do we see here? The Bible says, Nehemiah said, and I looked. The I say look, and the I say look. When you look at your family, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? Are you seeing the purposes of God being accomplished? Or are you seeing something contrary to what God has desired for your family? What do you see? The eye is just an organ. But I'm talking about your perception. How do you see things in your family? How do you see the goings on in your home? What is happening? Are you on top of things? Or are you laid back? Nehemiah not only looked. He said, I looked and next I rose up. Man of God. That's what your name is before God. It's time for you to arise. No more laid back. So many men are so laid back. Oh, the wife can take care of it. Oh, the wife can do this. Oh, the wife can do that. But the responsibility is yours. You cannot delegate. You cannot delegate that. You can delegate. But you cannot abrogate, as I said. Delegation is not abrogation. Yes. You can tell your wife to do this or your children to do this, but the responsibility lies on your head. You will have to give an account for your family before God. You will have to give an account. And so Nehemiah rose up, and I'm appealing you to, to you this morning: rise up and take your leadership role in your family. You are the leader. That's what God says. Go to 1 Corinthians 11. 1. What did he tell Paul? In 1 Corinthians 11. 1. He said, Paul, I want you to know that Christ is the head of every man. But the man is the head of the wife. Which means the man is the head of the household. Amen. Sometimes, it's, you know, sometimes I laugh when I hear that. You know, the men are at home minding the babies and the wives are going out to work. It's happening here. Yeah, it is. It's happening. But, but is that the divine order? No. And it's not the divine order. No. The man is the head of the wife. So <laughs> God, God did not God did not give them Eve work to do. He said, I'm making you a help meet. But it was Adam that he told to what? Till the soil, dress the, dress the garden, do everything. But you see, the devil has so mesmerized society. The devil has so, has so confused us that we do not know what we are doing. Everything is out of order. Everything is mumbo jumbo in the family. But it ought not to be so. If we are biblical Christians, we have to go by the book. We have to go by the go with what the word of God says. We man is the leadership. The man has the responsibility. You will delegate. But you, your wife is accountable to you, not to God. He's, she's accountable to you, and then you are accountable to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's the order. And so I, I'm praying this morning. I've been praying this morning. I say, God, I pray that our brethren will get it and walk according to the divine order. There is an order. When we don't walk according to the divine order, it is disorder. It's disorder. When we don't walk according to the divine order. Naimah stood up. God asked Adam, where are you? He did not ask Eve. Genesis chapter 3. He said, Adam, where are you? Was, was Adam the one who ate the, the apple first? Was Adam the one that, is, that the devil deceived? But what did God say? Adam, where are you? <laughs> he did not go to Eve. So let us maintain that order. And wives, sisters, whatever, whatever position we have in any man's life, that is the order. Let's not try to change it. Because if we try to change it, it's going to be this order. Amen. And then what happened? The next point. Jeremiah began to, began to give instructions. He said, I rose. I looked and I rose and I said, 
to the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Nehemiah began to give instructions. Clear instructions. Men, we are the one who should give the direction in the home. We are the ones who should give the instructions in the home. The wife, yes, is a suitable help meet, as the, as the word of God says. But at the end of the day, we have to take the lead. The man has to take the lead. And so we see Nehemiah giving instructions. Hallelujah. He gave clear instructions. You see, when you give, when you give instructions, then everybody knows what they are doing. <laughs> there, there is no confusion. So you'll be able to see who is performing and who is not performing. But if you just leave everything like that, you know, everybody, everybody take your cue. You know, you go you go and do what you want to do. Then the other one go and do what you do. That, you, know, you, you, you cannot. We cannot want. You see, it is the work of the devil. These things are so subtle. And yet we are allowing it to happen in our homes. And then we are not productive. We are not productive. We are not productive for the kingdom. We are not productive for ourselves. We are not productive for society. There is no productivity. Nothing is happening. We are just going around in circles. And so Nehemiah gave, gave directions. Nehemiah gave directions because he was spiritually prepared. Men, fathers, whatever, what have you? How, much, how prepared are you? How spiritually prepared are you to lead your home? To lead your family into the things of God. Are you so busy? Are you so taken up with the job? Are you so taken up with all the other things that are happening around? You see, all these distractions, I call them satanic. Mm -hmm. Satanic distractions. Rich. To take you from the purpose that God created you for. To take you from the plan of God. So you are serving the devil on our ways. On our ways. But the Bible says we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. That's right. We should not be ignorant. So when you begin to see these things happen, you should you know, stand back and say, wait a minute. It's happening. It's going on here. No, take stop. And see what is happening. What was the next thing? When Naimah gave the instructions, they obeyed because he commanded the respect of the group. Men, do you command respect or you do, do you demand respect? Oh, you get for respect. You have to respect him. I am the man. But you are not doing respectable things. So how, how can the I mean, I've seen, you know, cheap, I'm just living just over this weekend. A uh, 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 boy, I think he's nine years old, somewhere in one state. You know, he got a gun, killed his 13 year old brother, shot his mother, shot his, his sister. How, 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 did that, how, how did that come to happen? How did that come to happen? The destruction of the family by the devil. Nine year old boy, just gone crazy. How did that happen? Why, why is he not respecting the home anymore? Why is why, why? I think this thing should occupy our mind. We should be, you know, begin to, to think about it, begin to ask, begin to go to the Lord in prayer about these things. You see, they, they obeyed him because he, 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 he commanded the respect of the group. You see? Then he, 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 he challenged them. He challenged them. He said, be not afraid. Be not afraid. And that is what I want us to know. Some of us are afraid to, to confront the devil. You know, some people when they get saved, say, you know what? I'm just happy with my salvation. The devil is over there and I am over here. So I don't want... Listen, whether we like it or not, the moment you say, I take a stand for Jesus, you've invited the devil. Yes. You've invited him. Because those who are his, he's not bothered with them. He's not bothered with them. But those who have taken a stand for the Lord, he's after you. And so whether we believe there is a devil, whether we believe that he's fighting, whether we believe or not, <laughs> it's happening. So we better believe it. 
you see? So, so he challenged them. He said, be not afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Why should we be afraid to battle the devil? Why should we? The Bible says, resist the devil. James 1 chapter 6. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Why should we be afraid to stand, to stand before the devil and declare the word of God? He says, be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. And fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. We have to have a holy boldness. Yes. A holy boldness to stand before the devil. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know who you are, then you will be afraid. But if you know who you are, you won't be afraid to stand before the devil. He did not, he did not sugarcoat the problems. You see? He let them know. Sometimes we, we try to, you know, just mellow things and say, okay, no, it's all right. Everything is going to be all right. No. Sometimes we have to be real with our families. We have to let them know what the situation is. We, we, we don't have to be nice about it. If there is a problem, we have to let it out. Because that is what the family is for. You see? We have to let it out. So, Nima did not sugarcoat the problem. He told, when you, when you tell somebody to fight, what are you telling them? You're telling them that there is trouble. There is trouble. And so this is what I'm telling you. The family is in trouble, my friends. And sometimes, even the, 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 the family of believers is even worse it's even worse than, than the family of unbelievers. The things that are going on. And yet we have what? We have the word of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We are born again. Amen. So why should these things be happening? Why should it be happening? You see? Why should it be happening? But we see Nehemiah challenging the, 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 the people. <coughs> Nehemiah saw a physical enemy. The, the, he saw Sanballat, he saw Tobiah, he saw the Ammonites and everything. Nehemiah saw a physical family. I mean a physical enemy. But we, we all should know that the enemy that we are fighting now is not physical. It's not physical. We should know that as God's people, the enemy that we are fighting is not physical. You just see the result of, of, of what he's doing why is this child behaving like this? Oh, why is my wife doing this? Oh, why is my husband? You know, why is he not coming, coming home after work? Our own. Absence without leave. You know, why? What, 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 what is happening to you? Why is, why is he behaving like that? This thing should make us begin to, 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 to be aroused because we are not fighting a physical enemy. You don't see, I mean, you don't see the, 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 sometimes they used to, you know, they make the devil, they give him horns and all that and make him, you know, make like an animal and so. That is not, that, that is not, that is not what we are fighting. We are fighting wicked spirits that the devil has unleashed in these last days. You know what does he tell us in Revelation? He says the devil has gone out on a rampage because he knows he has a short time to live. And so he's walking over time. He's working over time to destroy people, to destroy families. Why? Because he wants to get back at God. The battle is not between us and Satan. The battle is between God and Satan. Man created in God's image is the battleground. Amen. Right. We are the battleground. But the battle is Satan wants to get back at God. For throwing him out of heaven. And so we have to be aware of these things. You see? Neymar was building a wall. Like this morning I said, oh Lord, I, I just want to, you know, let's let somebody say something or mention something that will let me know that you really wanted to, me to speak about this, these issues. And Pastor Carl was praying and he started talking about security. Nehemiah was building a wall, right? A physical wall around Jerusalem to secure Jerusalem. Now the question I want to ask, what walls are you building around your family? 
What walls are you building? What security? What things are you putting in place in your family to make sure that the will of God is done? To make sure that God is glorified in your family? To make sure your family is, is, is seen as a light? Your family is the salt of the earth? Your family is the light of the world? What, what boundaries are we setting? In our families. In some families, there's no boundary. For instance, the TV. Do you have parental codes, controls for your TV at home? Some people don't, they don't sleep with children, don't watch anything that you want to watch. Watch anything you don't, I mean, no control. You are, and the Bible says, don't give the devil a control. But when you do that, you open the door and wait for the devil to come in. The devil has stopped it. Because you don't have any control in place. No time for homework. They all, the whole time they are on their iPad, they are doing this game, that game, this game, that game. And you are the one giving them, giving them the one to go and buy the game. So, Amen. How are you using God's resources? What boundaries are you setting on the resources that God has given to you to raise your family? What boundaries are, what controls are in place? Oh, I, 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 I make the money and the wife spends it. Is it in the Bible? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What controls? Neymar was building a wall to secure Jerusalem. What security measures are you taking for your family? What security measures are you taking? I mean, these things should be exercised in our minds because they are real. Because we are, we sometimes we are the architect of all these things. So sometimes we need to pray, God, save me from myself. Amen. Because I can be my own enemy. Save me from myself. Save me from myself. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Boundaries are important. As I mentioned earlier. I'm coming now. Maybe the next five minutes I close. We are not fighting physical enemies. When we go to 2 Corinthians 10, 8 to 5, it says, Though we war in the flesh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. But Paul mentions against who? Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the wicked spirits that the devil has unleashed that we are fighting against. But we thank God. Nehemiah gave the people their sword and, 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 and this and that to fight. But we, we have weapons that are not physical. We thank God for that. We have weapons that are not, but are you using the weapons? We, sometimes we know what the scripture says, but we are not doing anything about it. I have a pastor in Maryland who says, if you walk the word, the word will work for you. Amen. If you walk it, it will work for you. That's right. But if you are just looking at it from the pages of the Bible, ah, uh, this is what, oh, I have the big tea. Oh, yes, thanks be to God who gives us the big tea through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you are not letting the devil know what victory you have. You're not letting the devil know how you got that victory. You're not letting the devil know what Jesus did to give you that victory. You are just saying it from the pages of the Bible. It's not going to work. You see, it's not, we have to actively engage because the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick. It has life. It is powerful. It is sharp than any two-edged sword. It pierces. It means so the dividing and sunder of the soul from the spirit, the joints from the mouth, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Work the word, it will work for you. He says we, 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 we wrestle against these things. It's a fight. It's a constant battle. There is no rest. Paul told the Thessalonians in Acts 14.22. He says it is too much tribulation that we shall enter 
the kingdom of God. The Christian life is not a life of ease. And so if you want your family to thrive, you want your family to go the place to the distance that God has for them, for each and every one, husband, wife, children, relative, because so we are Africans. We talk about extended family. See, that is why when Jesus gave us the, 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 the Great Commission in Matthew 28, he mentioned Jerusalem. No, Jerusalem. You should fight for your Jerusalem. Then before you go to Judea, then before you go to Samaria, but your Jerusalem is the first thing that you should fight for to make sure that everybody is safe. So it's a battle. I just came here to, you know, to encourage, to encourage us to, you know, to, to, to begin to think about these things, to begin to engage our minds. God has given us minds to think. Let us sit and think. And take these things to God in prayer. Nehemiah was a man of prayer. He took everything to God in prayer. And he got direction. And that wall was built in 52 days. The whole, the whole wall around Jerusalem was built in 52 days. Because Nehemiah took appropriate action. And so I'm just appealing to all of us. Let us take appropriate action to see that our families are built on the solid foundation. The foundation of the word of God. The foundation of the power of the Holy Spirit. The foundation by the blood of Jesus. The foundation in the name of Jesus. You see? So I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just closing now, my friend. Put on the whole armor of God. When we read here in, in, in Nehemiah chapter 4, we are told that the men, they were so engaged. They were so determined to build the wall. They did not take off their clothes. Except when they wanted to wash them. But now, what clothes do you have on to fight this battle? He says, put on the whole armor of God. And look at the English. It is present continuous. Put on. Keep on putting it on. Keep on putting it on. Keep on putting, it's not a one time put on. Keep on putting it on. Put on the old armor of God. It's not a one time putting. Put on, put on. Every day, put on the old armor of God. Put it on. Because we need the armor to fight the devil. Without the armor, you will become a, 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 a target. You will become a casualty in the battlefield. And God wants us to be winners. We are on the winning side. He wants us to be victorious in this battle against the devil for the family. Uh, if your family is important to you, you will stand up and fight. Let us stand up. Praise the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, glory be to God this morning. Oh, God, you are so good. God, you are so good. You are so good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what us to pray. <clears throat> A couple of prayers this morning before we close. I want you to begin to look at your family. Remember, the first thing that Emmanuel did was look. Look. I'm not talking about your physical eye. Begin to have a perception. Begin to let the Holy Spirit listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you about your family. Look at your family. Is everything okay? No, it's not possible. We all have problems that we are dealing with. But even as Nehemiah took every problem, every issue to God in prayer, and God gave him the solutions, I want you to begin to pray this morning about the problems in your family, about the issues that you are dealing with, and ask God to give you divine solutions. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's begin to pray this morning. I don't know about your family. You know. You know the things that are, that are bothering you. You know the things that are not right. You know the disorder. You know the confusion. You know what the devil is trying to do in your family. I want you to begin to pray this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we come to you this morning. Lord, we thank you. Because 
You are the almighty God. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us. And so this morning, Father, we lay our families before you. We lay our families before you. All the problems, oh God, you know everything about them. But we lay them before you this morning. Father, we ask for divine solutions. We ask for divine solutions. We ask that you will give us wisdom. You say wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, in all you're getting, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. God, give us understanding about what is happening to our families, about what is happening in our families. Lord, we pray that you will show us. You show us the way out. You show us the way out. You say, by wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, its walls are established. Lord, we pray that you will give us wisdom. Wisdom to build our homes. Wisdom to build our families. Give us understanding, Lord, that our families will be a strong family. The biblical family. Not the family of the world. Not the family that is going the way of the world. But the family that is going the way of the cross. The way of Jesus Christ. Submitting to the Holy Ghost. Obeying the word of God. Living according to scripture. Living holy lives. In the name of Jesus. This is our desire, oh God. Because you say, be ye holy, for I am holy. Ah, you say, pursue righteousness. Pursue peace. Pursue holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. And so these are the things God that we desire to see in our family. And so Holy Spirit, we ask that by your power, you will equip us. You will equip us to lead our families of the things that are not pleasing in your sight. That we shall begin to live according to your word. We shall begin to live according to your direction. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The, the second prayer I want us to pray. It's a time of, you know, and I said the, the topic is the battle for the family. I want us to go into warfare this morning. Whatever you know, the devil is doing in your family. Whatever it is, an attack. Whether it's, it's divine, the sister talk about divine. What is the devil divine in your family? The Bible says, what when God has spoken, who can disannul? When God has stretched his hand, who can turn it back? Who? The devil does not dare. Who can turn it back? And so this morning, I want you to take the battle to the gates of the enemy this morning. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Begin to come against the works of darkness. Begin to come against the satanic plans of the devil for your family. Come to them. Use the blood of Jesus. Use the blood. The Bible says we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Every agenda that you know the devil is trying to, to implement, to carry out in your family. Cancel it with the blood of Jesus. Cancel it in the name of Jesus. Cancel it with the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Take authority over the devil this morning. He has no place in our lives because we have been bought. We have been bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. We are not our own. We are not our own. We belong to Jesus. We do not belong to the devil. Remember what, the, what we, 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 we talked this morning. First uh, uh, Peter 2 and 9. He says we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. Called forth to show the praises of him who has called us out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. And so the devil has no hold over us. Because the devil does not own us. The devil does not own us. In the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name this morning, Father. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your name this morning. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, God. Take all the glory. We thank you that you've given us what we need to hear, not what we want to hear. Because you say we, we develop itching ears. We just want to let people say what we want to hear, not what we need to hear. But Father, we thank you this morning that you've given us what we need to hear, oh God. And so we ask that you help us to sit back and take a perspective, not only even of our own family, but of the neighborhoods, of our communities, and see what is happening. Because you've called us as your people to pray. You say, my people who are 
call by my name will humble themselves and pray and confess their sins and turn away from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. We are the people of God. We are to pray for our communities. We are to pray for our nation. We are to pray for our leaders so that God will move. God will move and turn this nation back to him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So that the intention that God had, the original intention that God had for the family, we shall begin to see to happen. Even in our time, in our days, in our generation, we will not die, but we will see the answer to our prayers. Because God is on the throne. Every family in heaven and earth is named by him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.